Yeah, it seems like it's, I mean, we got one more in the last minute, so maybe we should just go ahead. I think maybe that's what we have is what we have. Okay, so I will, <clears throat> I will lead off. Um, so to those of you who are listening, uh, welcome to the Whitney Sports Complex public information session. This is the third of four, um, and thank you for joining us, and we're about to get started. So we have an, uh, uh, an interesting agenda for you today. Um, we'll start with introductions, then we'll move on to project goals and building program. We'll talk about the site and context of the building. Andrew's gonna present three design con uh, concepts, and then we're gonna break out into uh, three different rooms where we're gonna ask for your input and response to questions. So the procedure of the meeting is uh, we're gonna start with the presentation, then the rooms will allow you to uh, bring forward your questions that you may have during the presentation. We want to hear those and we want you to uh, get more familiar with the concepts um, so that at the end you can rank those uh, options and that helps us take a re recommended design to council. Um, so a little bit of protocol, um, please uh, mute your mic and um, turn your video off so that we can share the bandwidth with everybody. Um, and I think that's uh, uh, you know, our start. And then uh, I'm gonna turn it over to John Romano to say a few words on behalf of the town. And then I will introduce the Perkins and Will uh, team. Thank you, Phil. Um, as Phil mentioned, my name is John Romano and I am uh, the Commissioner of Community Services for the town of Whippy. Um, and we are here and very excited to be talking with you tonight about uh, the, the new sports complex for Whitby. Um, there's been a lot of interest in this project. Uh, we understand the value that, that uh, recreation complexes bring to the community and how important it is to get these, these buildings right, which is why we're going through this really extensive consultation process. Very excited to hear uh, what you have to say about the, the uh, future recreation complex. Um, with me tonight um, are members of the project team. We have uh, Steve Wallow, who is the project manager on the, this build. We have uh, Catherine Bridgman, who is the director of facilities. And uh, uh, we have Sharon Meredith, who is the manager of recreation. Um, Matt Gaskell, who isn't with us tonight, but is the CAO at the town, is, is also a member of the project team and I am a member of the project team. So with that, um, I'm gonna turn it back over to Phil and uh, again, look forward to hearing your comments throughout this evening. Thank you, John. Uh, again, my name is Phil Fennick. I'm principal architect with uh, Perkinson Will and uh, on this team uh, with uh, Andrew Frontini, who's design lead, Philip O'Sullivan, who's project manager, Hannah Brash, who's inter in intermediate architect, um, Michael Bloy, who is the project architect, and we're also joined by uh, Madeline Kim and Christina Grimes. Um, so we are part of the architectural team of Perkins and Will, and you may have encountered our work in your community because Andrew was the designer of the Brooklyn Library and Community Center and the Whitby Public Library. So we bring uh, a vast experience of design of community facilities throughout Ontario and beyond. If you've traveled to the Magna Center in Newmarket or Angus Glen or out to Ottawa at the Minto Community Center and other facilities in Richmond Hill, Toronto and Mississauga, you've uh, visited and, and uh, participated in events that are being held in projects that we have designed. So we're very, very thrilled to continue to work with the, the town of Whitby. Any project we start begins with understanding your vision and the need this the project needs to fulfill. And the town of Whitby crafted a, a vision for this project to create a multi-purpose gathering space for inclusive sport and community programming, a place for residents of all ages and abilities to connect, play, and get active. The needs were defined by the sports facility strategy that outlined four key program components that, that the town will need. Uh, twin pad arena, indoor aquatic center, multi-purpose space, and indoor walking track and other programs. And you'll see us talk about those programs over the coming uh, presentation. In particular, 
um, there are the two components of aquatics and ice uh, were identified. And the best practice for aquatics in a community has, is to have one pool for 25,000 to 50,000 as an industry standard. Currently, Whitby has one for 68,000. So this project is going to help address that balance. The demand for ice time in Whitby continues to grow. Currently, there are 10 ice pads in the town of Whitby. Um, 11 ice pads will, will be provided at the completion of the Whitby Sports Complex in 2024 uh, because uh, two will be added, but one will be removed uh, because of the uh, removal of ice at Luther Vipond. So the net result is that there will be 11 ice pads, and that is exactly what the sport facility strategy recommends. So that need will be addressed through uh, this project. By 2031, uh, Whitby is projected to grow to 193,000 people. So there is growth and with that comes future needs. The sports facility strategy is uh, addressing needs up to 2031 of which the Whitby sports complex is a key component. So design work begins on that in 2021 and the project will be completed by 2024. However, in the meantime, there are other programs and other services that need to be addressed. So there's the parks open space and facility master plan that begins in 2021 and goes to and forecast needs to 2031. And that will ad address a lot of other uh, parks recreation needs beyond the components that are being addressed by the Whitney Sport Complex. So it's a continuum as, as towns grow, they renew their studies, they forecast what's needed and they prepare builds and, and programs to reflect those th that growth. It's also a continuum in terms of conversation and, and communication. Uh, this is an ongoing conversation that started in actually 2015 uh, through the sports facility strategy that included public information sessions, web surveys, uh, focus groups and key informant interviews. It continued in 2020 uh, with a visioning session for this project. And when we came on board in late 2020, uh, we began with interviews at, of, of, uh, of the councillors and mayor and the staff experts to gather their thoughts and input on this project. Before we design, we, we'd like to begin to, by understanding uh, the the past of a community and the present of the community. And Whitby has, and the land it's on, has a very rich history. And that has shaped its current character of place, the natural uh, environment, and the, the culture of the community. And the fabric and culture of Whitby is changing as well. And the town and community are working hard to acknowledge that and respond to it through programming and design of its facilities. And we feel it's important to take that information and use it to reflect your identity. And this is particularly important when, when, you, when you experience the broader context of municipalities in Ontario, where the multi-story residential or the big box retail or the single family residential all have a, se a sense of sameness about them. Uh, they may be well planned, but there's, not, there's no sense of identity for each community. And we feel it's it's an opportunity and maybe even an obligation of the municipalities to raise the bar of their, their municipal facilities and begin to try and reflect the identity of the community that, that these buildings are serve, serving. So with the Whitby Sports Complex, you're entering kind of the next civic chapter. You're building on the legacy that you've started with the two facilities that we mentioned, the library and the community center and library. Uh, so the part of that process is to respond to the needs. That's, that's what we're doing today. Uh, we wanna bring together programs that work seamlessly together and, and in an innovative way. We wanna be able to create a destination on the site that we're building. Uh, we want to explore higher sustainability goals. And of course, we want to manage it to be on time and on budget. On the topic of sustainability, um, that deserves a little bit of mention as to what that is. It's, 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 to it's to design with the least impact on the environment. And there are two 
ways of, of measuring that. There's LEED Gold, which is a green building grading system. And the gold is a standard that we're striving for. And it's quite high up there in the ranking. Or you can strive uh, and or you can strive for net zero carbon, which is reducing or offsetting the greenhouse gases from energy use that, that, that creates those. And some of the targets that we're gonna to use to, to achieve lead gold or uh, net zero carbon is to watch the water use that we're using, to lower greenhouse gas emissions, to provide green education through the building, to enhance the interior environment through biophilic design, and to explore what renewable energy can bring back to the project through photovoltaic cells and photovoltaic arrays. So before we get into the program and the context, let's look at the, the site. For those of you who, who, who don't know, this project is gonna be located in the Southwest quadrant below the intersection of 407 and Highway 12. We've, we've nicknamed this the gateway site because we feel that people are passing into, uh, uh, through Whitby, will see the building and the site has a, a great opportunity to introduce people to Whitby. And even if you're going from North to South, along Highway 12, um, you will experience the building uh, as a, a introduction to, to, to Whitby. So before we started designing, we worked with the town to come up with a series of project goals. Project goals are very important to us because they help us make decisions going forward. And through our interviews with the staff experts and the councillors and the mayors and the project team, we came up with five key project goals. One was to create a sense of place, make the building visible and engaging. The second was to encourage recreational use. We wanna showcase activities that, that uh, entice people to participate and, and, and bring forward opportunities for, for everyone to, to uh, take part in programs. We wanna balance informal and dedicated use. We know that the pool and, and the gym are, uh, sorry, the pool and the arenas have very specific needs, but there are plenty of other programs that, uh, program rooms that can be very flexible and allow for informal uh, programming and, uh, and services. We wanna provide good value and ensure the design aligns with the budget, but uh, is built of solid materials, timeless design, very much like the facilities that you have now. And as we mentioned before, we wanna strive for higher sustainability. So let's look at detail, the program of spaces that you're gonna see represented in the designs that Andrew's gonna feature. There's a twin pad arena with about 200 seats, equivalent to the McKinney uh, complex. There's aquatics and change rooms. Uh, there are eight lane by 25 meter uh, tank and a leisure tank. There are rooms for arts and cultural and multi-purpose rooms. There's a walking track and there's activity and wellness studios. We recognize that we may have missed programs that you think are needed. And we, we ask that you bring those forward during the breakout sessions at the end of this presentation, or you can contribute your ideas through the online survey. Finally, it's also very important to mention that uh, when we design uh, these spaces and the relationship to each other, we want to make sure that they are designed to be accessible, comfortable, and easily connected to the common public spaces. So to understand the design, we start by understanding the site and the land it's on and the context and surroundings. And I'm going to turn this over to uh, Michael to give us an understanding of, of the site analysis that, that we went through. Thanks, Phil. Uh, so zooming in a little bit on the site here, um, we started the project by thinking about um, our, our surrounding neighbors as part of this new uh, development in the area, the new road that's uh, that's coming across, linking linking the streets to the south, um, and some of the the, the commuter parking lot and, and future uh, transit station to the uh, to the north that, that we're also kind of fronting onto. Um, and then also thinking about the uh, the topography of the site, how the site sort of gently slopes um, down towards the south and some of the existing vegetation that's on the site and how we might think about um, 
building out from there and 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 using that as a as a generator for uh, for our design. And on the on the next slide, um, and another really important thing to think about on the on the site is uh, the solar exposure and our wind exposure as well. Um, really taking a kind of a close look at uh, at sun angles and and its path around the around the site throughout the year um, helps us to place the building in a, in a way to make the most of daylighting and also. Um, highlight areas that we may have issues with glare and we have to take a closer look at in, in the design. Um, and also in terms of the uh, possible plans for um, a photovoltaic array, um, how to best optimize that and get the most energy um, uh, generation from it. And in terms of breezes, we can, we can really take advantage of um, a nice summer breeze um, coming in from the from the east and 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 southwest at different times, um, and and create uh, kind of sheltered areas on the site that that have nice access to light and a breeze this could be a really nice summer spot to be. And of course, in the winter, um, the big issue is that that really harsh uh, winter wind uh, that you don't want howling in the front door of the of the facility. So really thinking about how we position the building to shelter that entry. And on the next slide, um, and then also kind of back to what what Phil was talking about in terms of our one of our really important goals for the project of making a place on this on this site and really um, giving it a character and, and making it a destination. We we were thinking a lot in in these diagrams here about how the building might be best positioned on the site. So on the far left, we're we're thinking that positioning the building at the kind of back corner of the site. Uh, is far away from the road where people are, are driving in to get to it or, or biking to it. Um, and it might be difficult to see or really understand what the, the property and the, and the building could offer. So that's, that was sort of felt to be a bit of a, 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 an unfortunate spot to put it. And, and of course, you're, you're very far away from parking potentially if we have to locate parking lots very far away from the entrance. Really similar case on the uh, far right diagram that if we place it too close to the road, um, you have that same issue with distance to walk to parking and, and and maybe then there isn't enough room to actually integrate those outdoor spaces that we want to showcase and and activate the, the site with uh, with activity indoors and outdoors. Um, but somewhere in the middle. Um, we think gives a nice connection and, and a way to split the parking into two areas um, and make the distance much shorter to the entry point. And then to also break it down with with program uh, located around the site and and really to sort of activate the entire site. And now Andrew's going to tell us about the concepts. Thanks very much, Mike. So we have three concepts as been stated, and and as Michael explained, we're really using that center of the site as the kind of most logical place to arrange both the building and parking areas and, and outdoor spaces. And this first option is called the terraced court. This is a compact and efficient design with, with our two um, hockey rinks or ice surfaces arranged side by side with back-to-back with -back change rooms and a shared ice resurfacing and mechanical plant. And that's the kind of one half of the building. And the other half is, is a wing that has the pool change room and as well the multi-purpose spaces. And, we could stay on the site plan actually. I just want to highlight um, the way those two main programmatic parcels are offset from one another and in between them is an interior street creating two entries, one to the southwest and one to the northeast. And we have two spaces, a kind of civic urban plaza facing the northwest and then a kind of more naturalized court facing the west um, edge of the property. And we see the opportunity for outdoor recreation and play spaces there. And we've distributed the parking into three um, zones uh, coming off an in, uh, kind of interior drive aisle on the site. Um, one to the south, which accesses that south entry and the play area. Uh, and then two that are more focused around, equidistantly focused around that kind of civic plaza. And right at the plaza, we'll have um, our, our uh, uh, handicap parking as well as a drop off zone. And um, you can see that the parking's broken into these spaces, allowing the site to have a naturalized aspect, avoiding that sea of asphalt, but really creating 
discrete parking zones that are focused on the entries that you want to go to if you're going to play hockey or going to the pool. You, you can really uh, conveniently access different parts of the building from different parts of the site. Let's go to the next slide. Here we see on, on the left, L1, that's the lower level. And we see that Civic Plaza, we see the main entry. You walk into the interior street and you can really see all of the program areas at once. On your right would be the arena A and B. On your left, you would see um, that customer service desk um, uh, in, in a kind of lobby area. And from that, you could be viewing into the pool with a kind of dry side pool viewing. Uh, and there's a corridor accessing your multi-purpose and activity rooms. And so what's nice is the kind of compactness of it really arranges all the programs around that interior street. And you can also move from one end of the site to the other through that, that space. On the right, we have the second level. And on the second level, accessible by an elevator or stair uh, is our walking track. And that track is effectively suspended uh, up in the rafters over the arena, arena B. And um, there's also viewing into both arenas from that level. And this is a quite a nice large walking track which through which you could enjoy views over both ice surfaces over the pool, the interior street and to the exterior. And it's worth noting in this option as in the next one, that walking track is actually in the cooler space of, uh, of, of the ice uh, of the ice uh, sheet. So um, it's great when you're exercising to not get too hot. Um, but we have another option which brings that space also into the uh, warm side lobby as well, just uh, for comparative purposes. Okay, let's move on. This is a view of from the exterior and it really at that arrival into the site, if we're looking really towards the, to the west, across the entry uh, plaza that's defined by those two offset parts of the building. And here we've shown the kind of artist's concept of how that building might look um, the two distinct pieces of the program shifting apart from one another to accentuate that entry where they meet. And we're showing a heavy timber roof potentially with a nice gentle curve to really accentuate this kind of nature of, a pav of pavilions for sport and recreation and how offsetting them really invites you to come in between into that interior street and engage with all the programs. Next slide, please. And then a view from the interior um, taken from the upper level on the walking track. And we're looking down into that interior street. We can see the feature stair, which brings us up to the walking track. We can see um, that service, the customer service desk and the entry into the change rooms. And then to the right of the image through um, internal glazing, we can see into the, into the aquatic space. And you know, it's really our intent that this interior street not just be a not be a corridor, but really a gathering place and have seating so that we can have a dry side viewing into the arenas as well into, as into both ice surfaces from that central space. And above it all is this undulating heavy timber roof uh, with lots of daylight coming in through clerestory windows. Next slide, please. The second option is called the Active Plaza. And, and it, it explores some new opportunities by arranging um, the ice surfaces in a different way. They're actually um, set at right angles to one another. And what this does is starts to articulate, you'll see that the plan shape isn't as simple. It, it's not two offset squares. It's actually kind of twisting and cranking. And what that does is create, uh, it frames a plaza at the entry to the building, which is defined on three sides by program. On the one side, the south edge, it's the pool and aquatics, then the lobby, is at the west end of that plaza. And then we have arena B on, on the north side. And we're imagining that arena A might be primarily programmed for hockey, but arena B might have a more recreational character. And it might be even possible to access a change area directly from the plaza. It, um, this has a quite a similar arrangement in terms of parking, but what's, what's important to note is that drop off and barrier free uh, parking right at the plaza the larger parking parcel across from the plaza providing convenient access. And then we have two Southern smaller parking areas and opportunities for outdoor activities sprinkled throughout uh, the site. And um, on the West side of the building as a kind of counterpoint to that civic plaza we're defining is a kind of triangular space framed again by arena A and the multi-purpose areas, which could be quite naturalized. We, as Michael was talking about the nature of the site, you know, nice sheltered areas to to kind of create a, a reestablished natural environment, a kind of wooded 
courtyard for outdoor recreation, gathering, picnicking, those sorts of things. And that would be directly accessible from that lobby. Next slide, please. We can see the, the plans on the left, the lower level, and you see really entry into this lobby. Um, what's interesting about this scheme is the lobby is a, a bit more of a hub which all the programs rotate around, Arena A, Arena B, pool, and that main customer service desk, all focused in the center. And again, the narrow point of the lobby where you can kind of see between the urban plaza and the wooded gathering space. Uh, on the upper level, you can see the uh, walking track above Arena B, and it's again accessed by an elevator or convenience stair. And we have a washroom up there, as well as some viewing over both arenas. And again, from this elevated perspective, you'd have a view over the lobby and over the pool area. And we will switch to the next view, which shows um, the exterior. Uh, again, looking from that point of arrival, really looking straight west across this larger uh, plaza framed on three sides. In, in the kind of background of the image, you see the lobby, lots of glazing. On your right, Arena A, with some strategically placed glazing and windows. And then on the left, the Pool. And what's nice about that, that aspect of the pool is it is facing north, so we don't have to worry so much about direct light and glare. And we're able to have some nice, nice expanses of glazing looking into that so that as one entered the building, you'd have a view, a kind of taste of what was available within the facility. And the space itself, we see a combination of hardscape and softscape. It could be used for events, gatherings, farmers market, who knows? There's a lot of potential here and it could support active uses as well. Uh, so uh, are kind of nicely protected from wind and kind of capturing uh, good solar access, uh, a kind of interesting civic space to think about at this part of, of Greater Whitby in Brooklyn. Next image looks at that design from an upper level track. Again, we're looking over the lobby towards the south and we see spaces for gathering and city sitting. We see views into the arena. We can see people on the walking track. We're looking down over to our left. We see a green area and that's that view into the kind of woodland uh, court that the building also frames. And then that main customer service point uh, just on the left of the image. Again, um, this is a lobby that's less linear, less of an interior street and more of a kind of gathering space or interior, interior uh, plaza in a way, which is a counterpart to the exterior plaza that the building defines. So let's look at the last option. We call this the bridge. Um, what's unique about this is that it arranges all three program areas sort of to one side of an interior uh, linear lobby. And we've actually just sort of described that linear lobby as being the bridge. And it has the, uh, the, the walking track above it and on the warm side. So we're not... Um, we're not running or walking uh, over one of the arena spaces, but over the lobby. And so as this, this lobby kind of has three entries, one at the extreme south end, one at the north, and one in the center, so that those pods of parking all have an entry uh, quite close to them. You can get inside quickly. And I suppose that's an advantage. Uh, what you what you have with this is, is less of a framed square or plaza that the other two options offered, but more of a linear public space in front of the building. Um, so it would be used for different uses, um, but it has uh, a drop off and, and barrier free parking as well. And we're providing some recreational spaces, potential play courts to the south sprinkled around the building. So we're trying to again, make use of those spaces that are between uh, outside the building between the edges of the property and the architecture that can be programmed. Let's look at the plans closer up. On the lower level of this design, you would enter into the lobby either through a main central entry, as I said, uh, and in front of you would be both arenas. To your right would be the activity rooms and multi-purpose rooms. And there's an, an entry to the north, which is uh, accesses those quite directly, or if you're going to arena A, it would be very proximal. To the south, there's an entry into the lobby near the pool and we have dry side viewing into the pool. And, 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 and at the heart of everything, again, is that customer service point. So it's, it's really served well by, the, by wayfinding and it's immediately visible, as well as those staff members being able to supervise the, the facility effectively. And that's a, a feature in all of the designs. The upper level plan 
we see the really the defining characteristic of this is that the track, instead of being a kind of more generous loose loose circuit, is is uh, is linear. It's a long run, and it sits over top of the lobby and becomes a kind of the marquee or address of the building. And and let's let's look at the exterior image on the next page. We imagine the idea of the, of the architecture of the bridge, which was inspired by the railway trestle, which used to be over where what is now Heber Down Conservation Area and used to link the port of be part of the rail link between Port of Whitby and Brooklyn. The idea of evoking that infrastructure through an architecture that that has bridge like structural components that support the walking track over the lobby and that that um, that language extends through a covered walkway which links the south entry to a parking area again gathering people from the landscape and drawing them into the building. Um, you see in this image that linear plaza that stretched out in front of the building and here we're showing you know it's a less gestural architecture um, the first option featured kind of curving wood roofs the second had more angular um, shaped characteristic maybe maybe dynamic window shaping and this is more uh, of a kind of flat line streamlined design uh, where the where the, the architecture of the bridge structure starts to characterize and let's have a look on the next slide at the interior. This is again a view from the track level. We're looking to the south over the lobby and you can see that nice two story space with glazing in looking into one of the arena surfaces on your right. Um, uh, in the center of the image below the walking track is that customer service desk. And then the, the, the track itself you know, suspended over the lobby and kind of animating it. Uh, people walking outside, walking past the windows to uh, to the to the main entry, walking over the main entry vestibule. They become the kind of animator of both the lobby and and the kind of image of the building from the outside. And again, lots of opportunity for daylight. We're we're suggesting again a wood structure here for parts of the building to bring that warmth uh, and to have that captured embodied carbon in in the building. Um, and, and kind of tie it into its natural setting. So those those are the three options. I've tried to describe them as best I can in the time allotted. What we're gonna do now is break out and I'll let Phil walk us through what those breakout sessions are going to entail. Yes, thank you, Andrew, for those tours. Um, so as you can see, we're really at the start of the design journey and you may have lots of questions and uh, bring those questions forward when we go into the three breakout sessions. Um, there you, you're gonna see a, a board kind of like this where each, each concept has a board and below that concept will be some kind of scripted questions that we'll be using to sort of prompt discussion. Um, join the discussion by either uh, speaking out uh, through your um, monitor or uh, by typing it in through um, the chat function on Zoom. We, uh, there will be two of us from the uh, Perkins and Will, and there'll be uh, staff uh, people from the town of Whitby on each one of these breakout uh, rooms. So we'll hear your questions. We'll respond to them as best we can. We'll record them by um, jotting them down on virtual uh, sticky pad notes on the actual uh, board. And then after about 10 minutes, we're gonna move to the next uh, uh, project. And, and then we'll cycle through all three. And then after about 30 minutes, we will all join back at the main Zoom room. And uh, then uh, we will begin ranking the, um, the concepts now that you've had some chance to get familiar with them, ask some questions and make some contributions. So I think we're 